economists have a role to play in suggesting how we should be possibly expanding our definition of economic growth to account for the costs that it often incurs in terms of climate change. We've made a lot of progress in valuing the environment and valuing natural resources as capital assets over the last 20 or 30 years, whether it's thinking about the value of fish or thinking about the value of clean air or thinking about the value of forests or pollinators. Famously, Bill Nordhaus measured how much climate change would impact the global economy. And his research was part of the reason people became convinced that this was a real problem. What are the costs of climate change? How much is it going to affect the economy? And how much is it going to affect people's lives? The effects of more extreme heat and cold is felt more by the poor in lower income countries who have less ability to adapt. So it's easy for the United States or Europe, which are already the richest you know, countries in the world, to say, well, we ought to move towards uh, sources of energy that use less carbon. It's much harder to say that uh, for countries where most people uh, don't have a car or an air conditioner or a flat screen TV. Economics isn't about money, it's about trade-offs, it's about the way people make decisions. That's what's actually most exciting to me about all of this, is it provides a path forward for us to work together to solve some of the biggest challenges. We are going to have to ask questions about what is economic inequality and how will we deal with it. These issues of inequality and environmental justice are actually going to be at the heart of a conference which looks at issues of climate, environment and economic growth, and in particular what is the future of economic growth, especially for lower income countries during the climate transition.